Hello students. Welcome to EPG Pathshala. I am Dr. Maimoon Akhtar from School of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Jamia Hamdard. Here we are going to discuss about the module Chemical Luminescence from Paper Atomic Spectroscopy. After completing this module, you shall be able to tell about the basic concept of chemical luminescence and luminescence, the various processes by which chemical luminescence can be generated, chemical luminescent agents, and the mechanism by which they produce luminescence. So, to brush up with the luminescence first, I'd slightly brief about luminescence. Luminescence is a common term used to describe kind of events when light emission is not due to high temperature. The term essence is derived from a Latin word essentia which is related to essence and all the type of essences describe change in physical, chemical and biological processes. So in general, luminescence is a term for the emission of light without obtaining or generating heat. This light may be a result of a chemical or biochemical reaction, radiation, activity of a subatomic particle or stress on a crystal. Various terminology for different type of luminescence. Fluorescence, immediate emission of light by a substance after it has absorbed light or electromagnetic radiation. Phosphorescence is delayed emission of light by a substance after it has absorbed light or electromagnetic radiations. That is, emission exists after the cessation of incident light. Electroluminescence. It is a kind of luminescence produced by passage of electric current or voltage that is material emits light in response to the passage of an electric current. Photoluminescence. It's emission of light by a substance after it has absorbed photons or electromagnetic radiations, that is photo excitation. Sonoluminescence. It is the emission of a short burst of light from imploding bubbles in a liquid when excited by sound. Crystalloluminescence. It is emission of light by some substances during the process of crystallization. Thermoluminescence. The property of some materials which have accumulated energy over a long period of becoming luminescent when pre-treated and subjected to high temperature. Chemiluminescence, it is emission of light or luminescence due to reaction of chemicals. Bioluminescence is type of chemiluminescence that is used by living creatures like anglerfish, comb jellies, earthworm, fireflies. It is luminescence caused due to biological reactions. Principle of chemiluminescence. Contrast to the phenomena of fluorescence which occurs when a molecule absorbs energy and this excess of energy is released in the form of photons by the molecules. Chemiluminescence in contrast happens when two reagents react and produce a product and the part of product is in such a state when that relaxes to ground state it emits photons. For example, two substances A and B they react to form a product C. The product C should be at least half of it or some part of it should be in electronically excited state which when relaxes to the ground state emits a photon. There we are showing the phenomena of chemiluminescence. Chemiluminescence. In this module, we will be continuing with different aspects of chemiluminescence. Chemiluminescence is emission of light due to chemical reactions. Reactions generally yield a product in an electronically excited state producing visible light is feature of chemical luminescent reactions. For example, if A and B reacts, gives products with emission of light. As a general rule, only quite exothermic reactions can generate the required energies for chemical luminescence. Therefore, 
most chemiluminescent reactions use potential oxidants like oxygen, hydrogen peroxide, etc. So to be more specific, chemiluminescence can be described as the electromagnetic emission that arises from the exothermic oxidation of an organic compound. So two molecules react and an exothermic reaction takes place in presence of some oxidizing agent and from there the electromagnetic emission appears which is called as chemiluminescence. Generally the exothermic oxidation of the organic compounds yield energy rich products which are luminescent because the molecule is either rigid or so small that it is unable to quickly dissipate the energy of the exothermic reaction internally. For a molecule to exhibit chemiluminescence, it must be able to form an electronically excited species through a chemical reaction at ordinary temperature. Because if you increase the temperature, and electronically excited species are produced, they may lose the excess of energy in the form of collisions, which otherwise would have been released in the form of photons. The energy must be generated in a single reaction step, and the molecule receiving this energy must have a limited number of accessible vibrational energy states, which would otherwise act as an energy sink. So if you remember vibrational relaxation, increase in vibrational energy levels result in vibrational relaxation, which is a deactivation process. The same also affects here in chemiluminescence. So if the excited state is emissive, it can chemiluminescence directly. However, it can also transfer the energy to another molecule which following excitation then emits the energy in the form of light. Requirements for chemiluminescence emission. For a chemical reaction to produce light, it should meet some essential requirements, like to produce sufficient energy to form the electronically excited state, the reaction must be exothermic in nature. Therefore, to predict whether the reaction will be chemiluminescent or not, free energy that is delta g term can be used delta g equals delta h minus t delta s where delta g is enthalpy delta t is temperature and delta s is entropy change for generating the electronically excited state product the actual source of energy is enthalpy the chemicals reaction requires activation energy which is given by the change in the enthalpy to produce excited singlet state, the available energy must be the difference between the reaction energy and the activation energy. That means if the energy provided is equal to activation energy only, the reaction won't show chemiluminescence. There should be energy that is equal to difference between the reaction energy and activation energy. If the difference is equal to or greater than the energy required for generating the excited state, that is delta E EX, the chemiluminescent process will be produced. Consider energy available equal to delta HA minus delta HE. That means enthalpy at ground level and enthalpy at excited state. It should be greater than or equal to change in the energy that is required for excited state. In many chemiluminescent reactions, the entropy change is small. So, Delta G and delta H are very similar in magnitude. The energetic requirement can be established in terms of kilocalories per mole. In this sense, for chemiluminescent reactions to occur, the reaction must be sufficiently exothermic and can be expressed by equation where lambda EX is the long wavelength limit for excitation of the luminescent species. Most of the chemiluminescent reaction produce photons in the range of 400 violet color to 750 that is red color nanometers. The creation of the electronically excited state 
and the generation of chemiluminescence in the visible region requires roughly around 40 to 70 kilocalories of energy per mole. This exothermic condition is associated with redox reaction using oxygen and hydrogen peroxide or similar potential oxidants. The second requirement for a reaction to be chemiluminescent is that the reaction pathway must be favorable to channel the energy for the formation of an electronically excited state. That is, the chemical energy must not be lost as a heat or any other form, for example, via vibration and rotational energy. Third requirement is the favorable deactivation process of the excited state must be photon emission only in comparison to the other competitive non-radiative process. The intensity of the produced emission depends on the efficiency of generating molecules in the excited state in chemiluminescent reactions. This is represented by the quantum yield or quantum efficiency and the rate of the reaction. The intensity of chemiluminescence arising from the chemiluminescent reaction can be described by the following equation. It's ICL equal to phi CL minus dA upon dt, where ICL is the chemiluminescent emission intensity and phi CL is the chemiluminescence quantum yield. And ratio of dA to dt is the rate at which chemiluminescent precursor A is consumed. The efficiency of chemiluminescence depends on how efficiently excited states are generated from the molecular reaction and how efficiently the excited state release that excess energy in the formula of luminescence. Phi Cl equals to phi excited minus phi luminescence where phi excited is the excitation efficiency and phi luminescence is the luminescence efficiency. So both excitation and luminescence efficiency can be influenced by variety of reaction conditions like other luminescence processes. For example, solvent employed, that means the reaction medium, concentration of the reactants, the pH of the solution, and purity of the reagents. The intensity of luminescence can be used as a basis for determination of any species whose concentration influences the rate of efficiency of the chemiluminescent species. To obtain precise measurements, the chemiluminescent reactions should be initiated in a controlled and reproducible manner because the emission intensity varies with time as the reactants are consumed. Now, what are the advantages of chemiluminescent analysis? The chemiluminescent analysis has very good sensitivity, a wide linear dynamic range, low detection limits down to the femto or atomolar range and the simple requirement of instrument. That is, the instruments required are very simple. Most of the chemiluminescent reactions used for analytical purpose range from 0.001 to 0.1 and even low. So, even very inefficient systems with much lower quantum yield can be used in analysis or can be analyzed by using chemiluminescent instruments on the basis of complete absence of the background emissions. For example, ultra-weak chemiluminescent reactions in which the quantum efficiency is less than 0 0.001 and often 10 to power minus 3 to 10 to power minus 2 or even lower. What is weak chemiluminescence or ultra-weak chemiluminescence? Ultra-weak chemiluminescence is very weak emission from the molecular reactions. So it is produced from oxidative reactions in living cells and the emitted signals are mostly 10 to power 3 to 10 to power 6 times less intense than those from luminescence organisms. The characteristics of a ultra weak chemiluminescent emission is that it is invisible to the naked eye. This kind of chemiluminescence includes a group of reactions that at least in living cells involve a number of oxygen intermediates. They play important role in certain types of cell activation in the defense system of the body and in ischemic heart diseases. It has been detected from a wide variety of intact organs, isolated cells and tissue homogenates from vertebrates, invertebrates, plants and from several reactions in vitro. Ultra-V chemiluminescence is associated with some important cellular functions 
लाइक माइटोकॉन्ड्रियल रेस्पिरेशन फोटोसिंथेसिस, सेल डिविजन और फेगोसाइटोसिस एट्सेट्रा नाउ कमिंग टू एग्जांपल्स ऑफ केमिल्यूमिनेसेंट कंपाउंड्स दैट मींस व्हाट टाइप ऑफ कंपाउंड्स शो केमिल्यूमिनेसेंस ऑन रिएक्शंस देयर आर क्वाइट अ नंबर ऑफ कंपाउंड्स एंड वील रेस्ट्रिक्ट आवर डिस्कशन टू ओनली ल्यूमिनॉल वन टू डाइऑक्सोट्रेन एक्रेडियन कंपाउंड्स ऑक्सलेट एस्टर्स एंड ल्यूसिफेरिन फॉलोइंग इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ ल्यूमिनॉल डाइऑक्सोट्रेन and oxalate esters following is the structure of luminol acridinium compounds and oxalate esters so discussing the example of luminol luminescence exhibited by luminol 5 amino 2 3 dihydro thalazine 14 dione was one of the earliest case of chemiluminescence luminol is an amino thalic hydroxide that is able to exist in several tautomeric forms other significant derivatives of luminol include isoluminol amino butyl ethyl naphthyl hydroxide and diazoluminol luminol and its derivatives are generally oxidized in alkaline medium to form excited amino thalate derivative which then releases the energy in the form of light here you can see the structure of some luminol and other reagents luminol derivatives and other reagents structure 1 is structure of luminol 2 is structure of isoluminol and structure 3 is amino butyl ethyl naphthyl hydroxide so what are the mechanisms by which luminescence is produced from luminol number of mechanisms have been proposed for luminescence of luminol depending upon the condition and environment in which the luminol is luminol and its derivatives produce blue light of 425 nanometer in presence of horse radish peroxide enzyme and its substrate hydrogen peroxide in horse radish peroxide reaction another oxidant species react with luminol to produce light it is not the hydrogen peroxide that helps in produce it's not the hydrogen peroxide alone that helps to produce luminescence from luminol when hrp is added to hydrogen peroxide light is emitted in measurable quantities that means both hrp as well as hydrogen peroxide is required for the luminescence of luminol hrp contains a heme that is iron which is responsible for portion of the catalysis the product obtained oxidizes luminol to diazoquinone the product of hrp and the hydrogen peroxide that oxidizes luminol to diazoquinone which then reacts with the hydrogen hydroperoxide anion to form an alpha hydroxy hydroperoxide intermediate that rapidly decomposes to the amino thalate product with the emission of light the mechanism 2 is in next slide so luminol produces emission through various mechanisms by reacting with different reagents it shows different kind of mechanisms to produce chemical luminescence one of the mechanism is reaction with the horse radish catalyzed reaction mechanism luminol produces luminescence by reacting with horse radish enzyme reacts with hydrogen peroxide to form an oxidized form of horse radish peroxide which reacts with the luminol anion to form a half reduced enzyme and a luminol radical the enzyme returns to the reduced form that is hrp by reaction with the second molecule of luminol and emission of light so other mechanisms of light production from luminol involves reaction with peroxy nitrite to produce a transient intermediate that rearranges to produce spent thalate and light the luminol reacts with peroxy nitrate produces an intermediate this intermediate is unstable which gets converted into amino thalate and produces light another mechanism involves reaction of luminol with hydrogen peroxide in presence of iron that is called fenton chemistry it gives an intermediate that rearranges to give light and eventually spent product the reaction explains the method of 
emission of light from luminol by reacting with hydrogen peroxide and iron through Fenton chemistry. A light of 4 to 5 nanometer is observed by reacting luminol and hydrogen peroxide with iron. So, another class of chemiluminescent compounds is 1 to dioxetanes. 1 to dioxetanes form an important class of chemiluminescent compounds since they are used for analysis of large number of biological compounds. These compounds are oxidatively cleaved thermally in a concentrated fashion to yield two carbonyl moieties, one of which is excited. The mechanism of this cleavage has been described as a chemically initiated electron exchange chemiluminescence and in short form it is called CIEEL. This figure describes the mode of decomposition of 1,2 dioxetanes. First, the di radical mechanism and second, the chemically initiated electron exchange chemiluminescence developments. Dioxetane breaks into a di radical which ultimately gets converted into two carbonyl compounds. One is excited state but that converts into triplet state therefore phosphorescence is not seen and in another case which is chemically initiated electron exchange there are two carbonyl compounds that is in singlet excited state is produced and from there fluorescence is seen. The di radical mechanism most often generates triplet excited state T1 while chemically initiated electron exchange luminescence generally results in singlet excited state. There are a number of substituents which affect the conditions which are necessary for decomposition. For example, a phenolic substituent permits triggering of reaction in organic solvents by the addition of base. Similarly, siloxy substituents facilitate triggering of the reaction by fluoride ions. Derivative triggered by enzymes have also been developed such as 3,2 prime spironoadamantane 4 methoxy 4, 3 double prime phosphoryl oxy phenyl 1,2 dioxetane sodium salt is a substrate for alkaline phosphatase. That means by the action of alkaline phosphatase, they break and produce the respective compounds and fluorescence. The next class of chemiluminescent compounds is composed of acridinium compounds. The acridinium compounds are basically esters in which intramolecular displacement of the alcohol derivative generates a four-membered dioxetinone which upon opening releases energy. The opening of dioxetinone ring releases energy in the form of light and these have been modified by altering the leaving group to yield more efficient luminescers. A variety of leaving groups including phenols, thiols, etc. have been used and developed and it has been shown that the leaving group should have a pK value of 11 for reasonable light yields. Acridinium being another class of chemiluminescent agent, it becomes important to understand how the emission occurs from acridinium compounds. The acridinium ester reacts in presence of a basic peroxide and produces new peroxide that forms dioxetanone. Dioxetanone rearranges to produce an acridone in an excited state and this acridone gets converted into the original molecule, parent molecule by emission of light of 460 nanometers after it goes to ground state. This figure shows the alternative mechanism of acridinium compounds to produce emission. The acridinium reacts with water, gets hydrolyzed and ultimately results in formation of the acridone with emission of radiation. This slide shows you the use of acridinium in antibody assay and it is known as immunochemiluminometric assay. The acridinium beads so at the beads are used, that means which will hold antibodies and antigens. To those beads, antibodies are added and antigens are added, followed by the addition of acridinium labeled antibody. So on breakage, the acridinium molecule is 
generated back with the emission of light. This shows you the detection of acridinium chemiluminescence. The acridinium ester, when reacted with hydrogen peroxide, generates a peroxide which then gets converted into a dioxetane and the dioxetane on rearrangement releases the light with the reversal of the dioxetane to acridinium. Another class of chemiluminescent compounds is oxalate esters. These are the most efficient chemiluminescent reagents. The esters in themselves are not chemiluminescent, but following reaction with an oxidant, they transfer the energy to an added fluorescent molecule. Of these compounds, bis 246 trichlorophenyl oxalate has been studied very well. The oxalate chemoluminescent agents have been reported to achieve an efficiency of as much as 27% in presence of suitable fluorocers. So compounds with electronegative substituents attached to them have been shown to yield efficient luminescence molecules. In ecosystem, the oxalate are less efficient luminescers that may be due to the hydrolysis of the oxalate ions in aqueous medium. The oxalates act or the mechanism of light produced by oxalates involves an attack by the peroxide on the oxalate ester in presence of the fluorophore in an organically soluble medium. The electron transfer takes place and structural rearrangement of the monoperoxyoxalic acid intermediate produce the excited state diphenylanthracene and from there the change in complex takes place which results in the production of light and the diphenylanthracene. The chemiluminescence of oxalic or oxalate derivatives is affected by electron withdrawing groups such as trichloro, dinitro, carbox esters or fluorine on the benzene ring that's attached to the oxalic portion of the structure. These type of compounds produce extremely efficient luminescence. The color of light produced depend on the wavelength generated by the fluorescent compound and different colored photons can be produced or different colored light can be produced like blue, yellow, green or red light that depends upon the type of compound employed. So another class of chemiluminescent agents includes luciferase and luciferin. Luciferase reacts with luciferin, adenosine triphosphate, oxygen and magnesium ions at pH 8 to produce yellow-green luminescence at 526 at 562 nanometer. Luciferase and luciferin comprises the another class of chemiluminescent agents. Luciferase reacts with luciferin, adenosine triphosphate, oxygen and magnesium ion at pH 8 to produce luminescence. A yellow-green luminescence at 562 nanometer is obtained. Luciferin is attacked by oxygen in the thiazoline ring carbon adjacent to the carboxylic to form a dianion. The dianion is oxidized then rearranged to form a dioxetanone. The dioxetanone loses oxygen and forms an oxyluciferin excited state. The quantum efficiency of this reaction is about 33% and among the most efficient light emitting reactions known. Luciferase produces light when it reacts with luciferin. Luciferase is an enzyme. It reacts with luciferin, adenosine triphosphate, oxygen and magnesium ion at pH 8 and produces yellow-green luminescence of 562 nanometers. To luciferin, adenosine triphosphate, oxygen and magnesium ion are added. This results in AMP luciferin complex and on addition of on rearrangement of the AMP luciferin complex, it gets converted into the luciferin and 
results in emission of light through the diazotain intermediate. So students, let's summarize what we have learned in this module. In this module, we slightly touched upon the basic concept of luminescence. We discussed in detail the cumulum cumuluminescence procedures, process of cumuluminescence, requirements for a substance to be cumuluminescent, advantages of the procedure, and various examples of the agents which show chemiluminescence and their mechanisms. Thank you.